We welcome to the show Austin Price. He joins us every week. Thanks to Rick Terry Jewelry Designs, Austin Price of VolQuest.com. Austin, thank you for the time as always. Where do things stand right now with players who still have decisions to make, use an extra year of eligibility, or move on? Who are you monitoring right now? Who do you think Tennessee has a good chance to get back for 2024? Well, as far as players that haven't technically announced, um, you know, like a guy like Cooper Mays, um, I would expect him to, you know, announce something sometime uh, in the next day or so. Um, expect him back. Um, that's no surprise. He didn't go through senior day. Um, you know, Brew McCoy's one that I think everybody's waiting on and, you know, continue to feel like uh, that's trending the right direction, but I don't think that one's done one way or the other. Um you know, Tennessee obviously has gotten most of their offensive linemen back, which is big. Most of their defensive linemen back. Um, to Marion McDonald's, the decision everybody's waiting on, I would expect him to probably test the waters in the portal and go see what, you know, what kind of deals are out there in the NIL world. And, uh, you know, it's kind of all eyes on, uh, you know, potential portal candidates for Tennessee at this point. What are the top targets? Tight end has gotten the most attention, I would say. Uh, where do things stand there and then beyond the tight end position in terms of portal targets elsewhere? Yeah, Tennessee right now is, uh, you know, they, they've had holding stays. The Notre Dame tight end, you know, come in uh, last weekend. And, you know, he went to Washington after that. Um, just put up uh, some notes on the general quarters about, you know, holding and potential uh, other visits uh, the rest of the week and uh, kind of see where things are stand there. Um, Jordan Dingle will visit Tennessee this weekend, the Kentucky uh, transfer, and um, those are probably the top two tight end, you know, targets on the board. You also have uh, Bauer Sharp, the uh, tight end from southeast Louisiana. Um, he'll be in this weekend as well, but I think that uh, Dingle and uh, Stays would be ahead of him at this point. And, uh, you know, we'll see kind of where things go. Tennessee just wrapped up a visit with two-lane transfer wide receiver Chris Brazell. Uh, big outside guy, six foot three, uh, you know, 185 pounds uh, from the state of Texas. He will go from here to visit Utah, Colorado, and Washington, and we'll see uh, kind of how this one this, this one turns out. But uh, very impressed. Uh, Eric Kane had a chance to catch up with him at the airport moments ago. Uh, full coverage of the Vault West, and uh, you know, got to spend a lot of time with Nico. Um, and, and I think that's the biggest uh, the biggest caveat for Tennessee right now is they're able to you know. You know, show hey, this is a you know the number one quarterback in the country. He'll be our guy next year, uh, and we'll be here during your entire duration. And uh, you know, for a tight end or a receiver, um, you know, quarterback, uh, you know, security is a big thing. And so I think you know that you know Brazil was really excited about you know his time with Nico the last day or so. Is there a backup to Brazil uh, if Tennessee is unable to to land him? You mentioned him going to. Different places, Colorado is involved there, uh, and then also, uh, you feel like Tennessee is going to address the left guard position in the portal. Yeah, I, you know Tennessee's looking at a few wide receivers that are in right now, and there'll be more that go in after the bowl games. Um, you know, and so I, I think that that's one where Tennessee wants to be selective. They definitely want an outside guy, Jason. They they want somebody that that you know six two, six three, six four. Um, you know. They want they want an outside receiver, and then left guard. Yeah, Tennessee would you know would love to you know, you know land a couple of offensive linemen, probably interior guys if they could find the right tackle. Sure, especially one with multiple years left of eligibility. Um, I think Tennessee would definitely go that route. But I think they'd love to kind of shore up the inside um, offensive line going forward. Awesome price Valquest dot com. Uh, where where do we kind of sit with uh, Boo Carter? I uh, saw last week, or everybody saw last week, you know, Jordan Seaton picked Colorado. Uh, we know that Boo has made a couple visits out that way, and he's been talking to, to Jordan Seaton. Where do you think Tennessee stands with uh, the in-state multi-position athlete and Boo Carter? Now, Boo Carter will be on campus in about a day and a half, two days, and he'll be going through bowl practice, so I don't think – anything to worry about with uh, Boo. I think he's uh, locked in and ready to go and, you know, ready to get uh, get to practice here in a couple of days as soon as he starts bowl prep and a lot of those freshmen um, that are early enrollees will be here for that. What position is Boo Carter going to play? 
I, I think he'll play. You know, he's going to get a shot on both sides of the ball. Um, I think they'll have some type of an offensive package for him. But I think he'll have a real shot, you know, to, to work at nickel and safety next year. And, you know, I think, you know, nickel might be exactly kind of where he lands. And so, um, but, yeah, I think he'll have, a, you know, a chance to, to, to help this team on either side of the ball. What position do you think he's better at? Currently, I would take him as a receiver because I think that's what he's, you know, shown showcased and shown more of um, at the high school level. Because at the high school level, it's all about getting the ball in your playmaker's hands and letting him do what he does. Um, outside of obviously being a, a, a special guy on, on, you know, special teams, but uh, you know, I think you know, when you look at what he could be on defense. He kind of has that uh, honey badger uh, mentality um, that that you know, I think a lot of you know schools have looked at and said, man, you know, that, that's kind of what we envisioned him becoming, right? Um, but, you know, right now, if you said, what's he best at right now, I would tell you offense, just because that's what he's done more of at the high school level. Austin Price, VolQuest.com. We are eight days away from the start of the early signing period. Uh, defensive back, since the ball from the mid-state, where do things stand there? And is there any other focus right now on the recruiting trail for Tennessee ahead of signing day? Well, Jaron will be at Missouri this weekend, and, you know, he wanted to take that visit. Um, they're probably the biggest contender to Tennessee. I still feel like Tennessee's in a pretty good spot there, but anytime a kid's going on a visit, that's something you have to be leery of. So heading into the visit, I feel like Tennessee's in the best shape, but uh, they're going to survive, uh, you know, this weekend in Columbia, Missouri. And that would be the, the focus right now in terms of the early signing period for Tennessee? Yeah, I mean, I just don't mean you know, from the high school standpoint. There's just not many options out there. I mean, do they do they get one of these high school tight ends to take a visit this weekend, like a Cole Harrison from Louisiana, the Rodriguez kid that's committed to Michigan, Michael Smith, does he come up here? Um, you know, who's a teammate of Jake Merklinger. I mean, you know, all those things that are worth watching. But right now, just nothing's locked in. So until it, anything gets locked in, it's kind of hard to you know envision it actually happening. And uh, Jordan Seaton, is that done in terms of communication? He's obviously committed to Colorado, but he has eight days until he has to sign. Yeah, in my opinion, I think that that. I mean, I know people are going. You know, a lot of people are trying to drum up that you know, Colorado or Oregon still in play, and he may take an official visit. But I don't think you're going out there. I don't think you're going on undisputed with Michael Irvin and <laughs> and Skip Bayless and everybody, and then 13 days later, you know, yep. sign him somewhere else. In my opinion, he's locked in with Colorado. I, I, I just. I just I don't see it. I know others want to you know still try to you know you know try to drag that out, but I just I just don't see that being the case. Well, some of those players from Texas A&M being part of the highest rated class ever is it is it easier or harder for for teams to be able to uh, recruit those guys who are, who are in the portal based on what they may or may not have gotten to go to A&M. I think it's just a hard reset. You know, when those kids go in the portal, whatever that they got or didn't get at Texas A&M kind of goes out the window, and it's a hard reset for those kids. And um, so I don't think it, it, it's harder or not as hard. Um, I think it just boils down to, you know, it, it, it kind of gets back down to you know ground zero on a lot of this stuff. And I think that's kind of where things are with any of these kids that Tennessee's recruiting or any school is recruiting pertaining to kids that have left Texas A&M. Austin Price is busy, so are his colleagues there at VolQuest.com as the month of December is a wild one in college football. He joins us each week here on Josh and Swain thanks to Rick Terry Jewelry Designs, making it unique, making it special, making it just for you. Holiday time is here. They can help you out. They want to be your jeweler at Rick Terry Jewelry Designs. Austin, thank you for the time as always. We appreciate it, and we'll talk to you again soon. Appreciate you guys. Thank you.